And when one of them sat at meat with him, he heard these things, he said unto him, Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then said he unto him, A certain man made a great supper, and bade many, and sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. And they all with one consent began to make excuses. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must needs go see for it. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I proved them. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and showed his lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city, and bring in hither the poor and the maimed and the halt and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done, thou hast commanded, and yet there is still room. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go into the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I say unto you, that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. Greetings, friends and colleagues. It's Sean Elvis. It's a beautiful day here in Colorado. Nice sunny day. Um, you know, in today's video, I want you guys to sit down. I want you to shut up. And I want you to listen to what I have to say. And then at the end of the video, I want you to drop your donations into the offering plate that comes around. And at the end, it doesn't matter what comments you put in the comment section. I'll just disregard them. Because <laughs> it won't have any effect or change whatsoever at all. No, I'm joking, guys. I'm joking. That, that doesn't sound like a good plan, does it? Um, of course, that doesn't sound like a good plan, Sean. It's a terrible plan. Listen, I know, guys, I know it's a terrible plan. Um, I just said that to make a point, right? Because in today's video, I'm tackling the question, why single Christian men do not go to church? If you're anything like me, you know, I've been going to church for years now. You know, I'm faithful to one main church, but I've also visited eight or nine, maybe more, other churches throughout the years and what I've noticed is there aren't many single men you know um, in church more specifically you know young men young unmarried men youth um, so what I want to dive into today is figure out why this is give a few of what my thoughts on the subject are because um, I remember a while back you know I attended a church here in Denver and you know there seemed to be a lot of people there more than I was used to right I've been to a lot of churches and there's been various numbers of people some churches very small and I haven't really went to any mega churches but anyway this church had more than my, I was used to and part of it was because it was a church slash school but anyways I remember uh, asking one of the ushers there, or I was telling him, I was like, wow, there's a lot of people here compared to what I'm used to. And he was like telling me like, well, there used to be like way more. There used to be twice as much, three times as much. Maybe four, I forgot, forgot exactly what he said, but he looked at me and he told me that. And I, and I, and, <laughs> and you know, it kind of didn't take me by surprise. Um, but I, I remember asking him, what happened? You know, why, why does everybody fall out of church? And, you know, I, he gave me the response that I expected. He told me, well, basically, you know, I don't remember the exact words he said, but he said something to the effect of, well, that's just the sign of the times, Sean. You know, people just don't want to come to church anymore. As if to say, you know, that... People nowadays somehow are unholy or wicked and and they just they don't want to come to church anymore you know now these ducks bro anyway um, now the reason I expected this response from him is because you know I used to watch this show on TV called um, kitchen nightmares maybe you've heard of it and in this show it was starring the famous chef Ramsey and basically this show um, is where a chef, you know, he would go to different 
uh, restaurants. <laughs> he would go to different restaurants that were struggling, you know, um, to get their customers in the doors. And, and the chef would try to do a makeover on the restaurant. He would go there and, and he would sit down and eat and dine in like, like uh, any other customer would. And then afterwards he would tell the, uh, either the chef or the, or the owner or whoever was in charge, hey, this is what I think's wrong with your food. This is what I think is wrong with your restaurant. This is where we need to improve things. And you know the first thing that he did is he would tear him down, right? He would he would he would just and you know that's part of the fun of the show, right? To just watch Chef Ramsay tell him tell him how bad their restaurant there is, right? And see the reaction like, "What? My food's amazing. I've been this is my grand great grandmother's recipe from 19 like 01 and and all that stuff and This lady's trying to get her dog out of the water. <laughs> she might get into the video anyway um so anyways you guys can kind of see where i'm going with this message right so my hypothesis is basically this at least at least some for some uh part of the reason why single men aren't showing up to church is because the churches are failing right they're failing um to i'm sorry <laughs> i don't want to get her in the video but um you know, the, the church is failing because they don't have anything to offer the men nowadays. That's why they're not coming to church. And, you know, church is just leaving a bad taste in people's mouth. They don't want to come. And, you know, part of the reason, yeah, maybe they just want to live a wicked lifestyle and turn away from the Lord. But, and you know, another part of it, I, I think, has to do with the fact that just the churches are, are failing to provide good service. Now, so, that being said, you know, what what is it that's making uh, men get turned away you know what do men thrive off of you know what what drives men to go to church in the first place you know and i gotta be honest you know <laughs> i remember when i was a younger man way younger but anyway a lot of it is sex drive you know sex drive drives men to church and women you know you know you hear that all the time people go to church to find a, a wife or a husband and you know it's no different for men you know men you know, we're driven by sex. We're just human. And, you know, there's certainly nothing wrong with uh, men and women being uh, driven by the opposite sex. <laughs> Getting all kinds of cameos today, guys. I, I apologize. <laughs> it's a beautiful day in Colorado, so everybody's out. But anyway, um, so, you know, God created men and women for each other, right? And, you know, it's, it's no secret that um, women... Uh, like a man with power and status and, and you know they respect a man like that they want a man like that and women or excuse me men they want they want a young beautiful bride right what kind of what guy doesn't want a young virgin bride right and you know but if you but what's happening you know I think is if you strip men of their power and status right it destroys the men's confidence and it and it and it makes the women see the men as weak and basically, it destroys the attraction between the sexes, right? Now, I don't, I don't have all the answers. You know, the video is not meant to be. Uh, this video is not meant to be all the definitive answers to you know why single men aren't in church. But I just want to make a few points in this video, and uh, maybe lay some groundwork, give you guys some ideas. So anyway, point number one um, that I have is. Men aren't going to churches nowadays because, you know, they're basically treated the same as women. You know, arguably even worse, you know, with, with feminism. You know, so, so what is it? Um, what do you... We've got more cameos coming in. Everybody's out here. <laughs> but, uh, you know, what do you do when you go to church, right? You know, the church is a, a, is a lot like the feminized schools that we have nowadays. You know, you show up. You sit down, you listen to your teacher, you do as you're told, you obey, and then you're dismissed and you go home and, you know, there's very little that you could do to change this. This woman lost her dog in the, in the river and the dog refuses to come out. Anyways, I'm going to try to finish this message. Anyway, so what happens, you know, the church is like the modern day feminized, feminized school, right? You show, you show up, you sit down, you listen to your teacher, you do as you're told. 
and you obey all that you're told, right? And then when you're dismissed and you go home, you know, there's very little that you could do to affect any kind of changes, right? So, in other words, you know, the churches are acting just like the modern feminized schools. You know, they treat the young girls and the young boys equally, just the same. And more cameos. Hey, what's up to the fishermen? <laughs> but anyway, you know, they, they treat the young boys and the young girls just the same. And, you know, the young boys aren't being brought up with any more respect or any more status than the girls. You know, you could even say that their status and their power has been stripped away from them, right? In the name of gender equality or whatever, right? So in essence, you know, the patriarchy has been just completely eliminated. And, you know, I'm not talking about just, you know, men, men being the elders in the church or men being the pastors or the preachers. No, she finally got her dog. But, you know, you know, and, I, and I'm not saying that, you know, young boys should, should grow up and be pastors right away, right? But, you know, what I'm talking about is, you know, young boys and young girls, you know, the youth. You know, because I can understand, you know, toddlers and, and, and little children. Um, you know, you, you can kind of basically treat them the same, right? But, you know, when they start getting to adolescence, they hit puberty and, and they become teenagers, you know, or, or something. You know, our youth is, is basically being treated equally, the same. And, and um, you know, this is why I think, you know, men gravitate towards things like sports, and, and they, they go after careers and making money, you know, um, because, they, you know, they want to impress the women because <laughs> they know that, hey, I need to seek power and status and, and money. And the church just, it doesn't have anything to offer men, right? So that's why they have to go out into the world, the wicked, sinful world, and try to find it elsewhere because it's not in the church. The church is not giving them any respect, any kind of status or power, Right. Let me give you an example. You know, when you watch a football game, when you watch a football game, you have, you have the men on the field fighting to win, right? They're charging against the enemy. And, you know, you have the cheerleaders on the sidelines rooting them on. And, you know, this dynamic is basically how the family unit should operate as well. You know, you have the husband who's the leader. He goes out in the battle. He fights the enemy head on. And you have the wife who is supposed to be supporting him, cheering him on. And, and boosting his confidence. But instead, what we see with feminism today is that the girls aren't being taught to cheer the men on, you know? They are actually being taught to get on the field and play and fight alongside with the men. So the men, they don't have any cheerleaders. We don't have any cheerleaders. And the team is a lot weaker because we have all our women on the field trying to fight. You know, there's you can only have a certain amount of players on the field, right? So you. You want your strongest players on the field. Um, so, you know, a lot of us men have realized, hey, you know, this game, this feminized system where you're treating men and women the same, this is not working. I'm going to just walk away. I'm going to go do my own thing. I got to go find another path um, to try to get this done, right? Um, you see, so the church nowadays is failing to give men the positions of respect, uh, the positions of leadership. And I'm not saying, you know, like I said, I'm not saying we need to promote young boys to be pastors and young men, you know. But what I'm saying is the boys need to at least be trained to be leaders. And the girls need to be trained to respect boys, right? Um, point number two. The church nowadays, or excuse me, the Bible says that women are to keep silence in the church. You know, it's not permitted for a woman to speak it's not permitted for a woman to usurp authority over the man and you know what we see a lot in churches today is women yelling amen in church amen this amen that right you know i hear it all i hear it a lot and you know that's a man's job you know that's a man's role to be yelling amen in church you know so when i hear women yelling amen in church you know what i hear i hear a woman trying to usurp a man's authority i heard a woman trying to be masculine i hear a woman you know thinking that she can speak as if she's the head of the household right and you know i can already hear the arguments against this saying sean you're taking it way too far saying women can't even say amen in church come on well you know i get it you know it's a man's job to step up and if men aren't yelling amen in church <laughs> and sometimes the woman's like well i'm gonna yell amen right 
yeah, you know, I agree. You know, men should be yelling amen. That's their job. They need to step up and do that. You know, but it's also a woman's job to step down, right? It's her job to step down, be submissive, right? You know, there's power in the words, I need you, right? There's, there's power in those words. You know, the Bible talks about the church being a body. And, and when you have one part of the body trying to do or perform the duties of another part, you know, that's no good. That's no good. I mean, for one, you're going to take away the, fo- your, your, uh, the focus off your duties and you may fail in those duties, you know, because you're not designed to do those duties, right? And you're not equipped to do those roles. So if you're trying to do two, two roles, your role and somebody else's role, and you're not even designed to do this role, you know, you're just going to do your job even less, right? So um, it's, it's way more encouraging to work together with people and to make people feel like they're needed. Right. Like to say something like, hey, you know, I need you. You know, I cannot do this work without you. This job will not get done without you. You know, I need you to step up. You know, we need you to step up. You know, human beings are are pretty awesome. You know, when we when we give somebody a little bit of responsibility and respect, they generally rise to the occasion. When when they when they feel special, when they feel needed. Like, hey, you know, nobody can do this without you, right? It's got to be up to me. And, you, you know, I, I'm, I'm thinking of all, like, the natural disasters or emergency situations, you know, when there's nobody else around and it's all on you. You're the only one who can save this person, right? People step up, you know? And, and the same concept applies in church, you know? You see, God made men and women separate, okay? He made... He made us different. He made us unique. He gave us our certain roles to play. And and, I, and he did that all for a reason. So um, that's point number two. Point number three is I would say, you know, men respond to hierarchy. Men respond to hierarchy. Like I said, if you give men an avenue to advance in the company or advance in the church and give him an opportunity to prove himself and give him a chance to be promoted and recognized, for his achievements, guess what? You know, nine times out of ten, he's going to answer that call. He's going to answer it. He's going to say, hey, you know, I'm the, I'm the man for the job. I'm the only one who can do this job. But heck yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it to the best of my ability. And when the church gets behind him, when the women get behind him and support him and congratulate him for doing a good job, I mean, he just keeps succeeding. And then, and then the whole church thrives because of it. Um, you see... I don't think men have a problem um, starting at the bottom, you know, so long as they know, hey, if I do a good job, will I advance in the company? You know, but, but what I see in churches now is that men are treated the same as women, okay? They, they come in, they sit down, they're told to shut up, put your money in the offering plate, and then go home. You know, there's no honor in that. There's no respect in that, you know. Women aren't going to respect that. There's, you know, there's no opportunity for advancement there when you just show up to church, listen to the preaching. And, you know, I'm not talking about the new, the new believers, right? I'm not talking about the new believers. Like, I, I get it, you know. There's, there's new people who come in the church where, yeah, you know, they need to just sit down and listen and, and learn for a while, right? But, but at some point, um, they need to be given a responsibility. And they need to be taught that, hey, you can't, you can't just be sitting here in the pew, um, coming in and listening and then leaving every, every, every weekend and week out, right? You have to be growing. You have to, there needs to be goals for you to achieve. Like, hey, I get it. You're brand new right now. You're, you're at the bottom. You start here. You learn. And, and, and here's what you're going to be striving for next. I mean, think about it. You know, if I opened up a business, and, but I never put out an ad that I needed employees, that I that I needed, that I uh, and I never put up a now hiring sign or anything like that, you know, I may have positions in my company that need to be filled. I may know what those positions are, but you know, if I don't seek people out and tell them about these positions, how am I going to get those positions filled? You see what I'm saying? You know, and, and if I don't offer any training for those positions either, like even if somebody were to be like, hey, yeah, 
I see a need, a position right there available. I think I'll take that position. It's like, okay, well, somebody needs to train you for that position. Somebody needs to tell you how to do a good job, what's expected of you, you know. Somebody who's done that position before would be preferable, right? And anyways, um, so we want, we're wondering why you know, some guys aren't going to church <laughs> nowadays, you know. It, it, basically because there's not much incentive in it for guys. You know, the world is giving more incentives to guys than the church is. And, you know, that's the sad truth. Um, in fact, you know, one might argue that the way the church is operating right now is actually pushing men away, you know, from the church. I mean, with no men in the church, with status and power, you know, the women aren't going to show up. And if the women don't show up, the men aren't going to show up, you know. So what we have now is we have, excuse me, a lot of dead churches. Um, I mean, of course, you're always going to have the diehards like me. I consider myself a diehard. I'm going to be in church no matter what, right? I'm going to show up either way um, because it's the only game in town, right? It's the only game in town, so... Even if it's a bad game, I'm still going to be there. But, you know, there's there's not a lot of diehards. You know, most people are just average people. Um, they're, they're not really going to want to stick their neck out. Um, but, you know, and I wasn't always like this either, <laughs> right? It took a lot for me to get in there. But that's another story, you know. So basically what I'm saying is, when men have the same role and status in church and, and aren't given any power, you know, as the women, you know, of course there's going to be problems in the church. Of course men aren't going to show up. You know, women aren't going to cheer for men uh, to do the same things that they can do, right? That's, that's nothing women are going to cheer on, right? Women want strong men. They want fighters out there who, who, who have a role that they can't perform, right? So, you know, what do both sexes do, you know? They go to the world, they go to the wicked world to try to find a status and career and all that stuff and make money and advance in a company or something like that. You know, and women go out there, they take their clothes off, trying to get attention. And, you know, they do all the wicked things that the world, you know, is offering, offering to them because the church is, is honestly, it's failing. <laughs> it's failing. That's what I, that's what I see. And I don't want to make this video so long, so basically I'm going to close by saying, you know, how do we fix this? You know, how can we fix this? Like I said, you know, this video isn't meant for me to give you all the answers, you know. I, I didn't even raise all the questions. I needed. This is just a, a, just my, a few quick thoughts that I thought on the subject. But, you know, if I had to suggest something, anything, I'd say that, you know, the church, you need to get in church. Be in church regardless of, of how bad it is right now. Because no church, uh, any church is better than no church. Um, so put your hand to the plow, get to work. Because, you know, I'm telling you, if you obey God, you keep his commandments, you're going to see the results. Maybe not as, as fast as you hope to see the results. Maybe not as drastic as you hope to see the results. Uh, but eventually you'll see the results. Because, uh, you know, I've been in church for years now, almost a decade. And, and I, I'm barely starting to see the results of my hard work. Know? So, I mean, Jesus died for the church. You say, well, my church sucks, Sean. You didn't understand. You know, I know. I feel your pain, man. Um, but the Bible says, study to show thyself approved. So ultimately, it's it's our responsibility to do the right thing. You know, you need to read your Bible. You need, you need to make improvements in the church. You need to fill those, those, um, uh, those roles in the church, whether, you know, you're told to do it or not. You need to invent those roles, you know. You need to learn. I mean, if nobody's training you, hey, <laughs> you're just going to have to learn the hard way. That's just how it is, right? So, you know, anyway, that's my message for the day, guys, you know, for whatever it's worth. I know, you know, a lot of guys just want to abandon church because they, they think it sucks and there's nothing in it for them. And, you know, to a degree, I, I understand. Um, and I know where you're coming from. I agree uh, that the, the current state of the church could be a lot stronger could be a lot stronger than it is but you know i think jesus said if you're not with me you're against me so i think um if you're not trying to help the church um i think 
you're helping to destroy the church if you're not helping to build it. And for me, I know at least in this stage of my life, I, I'm not going to go out there and start my own church. I, I, I just, you know, it takes a lot to run a church. It really does. So I'm just putting my hand to the plow in, in the church that I'm in right now and doing the best of my ability. Anyways, I would uh, just encourage you guys to do the same um, and help build the church in whatever capacity you can and just understand the pitfalls that exist and work around them, work through them. Um, that's my message for the day, guys. Um, have a blessed day. And uh, the clouds just came in out of nowhere, but I'm going to go enjoy the rest of the day. So this day, guys, you guys do the same, and I'm going to give God the last word. Talk to you guys later. This is Sean Alva signing off. Peace. As always, I will give God the last word. And today I'm going to be reading from the New Testament, from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 2, verses 13 through 22. Here we go. The Bible says, And the Jews' Passover was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem and found the temple and found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and the changers of money sitting and when he had made a scourge of small cords he drove them all out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers money and overthrew the tables and said unto them that said, that sold doves take these things hence make not my father's house a house of merchandise and his disciples remembered that it was written, The zeal of thine house hath eaten me up. Then answered the Jew and said unto him, What sign showest thou unto us, seeing that thou doest these things? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years this temple uh, was this temple in building, and wilt thou... Um, destroy it in three days or rear it up in three days but he spoke of the temple of his body when therefore he was risen from the dead his disciples remembered that he had said this unto them and they believed the scriptures and the word which Jesus had said word of the Lord Amen